Bismillahir Rahmanir Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Brother, moderator, fellow panelists, uh, my distinguished and learned brother, Dr. Omar Ibrahim Vadilio, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was a doctoral student at the Graduate Institute of International Studies in Geneva. I didn't know how much Zionism there was in that institute. And I finally left without defending a thesis that I knew I could never defend in the Zionist Institute. So thank you for conferring the doctorate on me, but I don't have a PhD. <laughs> Islam, the religion, which came from the Quran and from Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu, I'm talking about that Islam has zero tolerance for oppression and the oppressor will begin to receive his reward for his oppression in the grave perhaps later on I can give you some description of what kind of punishment can re he can receive in the grave the world today is one which is witnessing universal oppression, multidimensional oppression. And if one cannot recognize that, then buy a one-way ticket to the moon. The oppressor created, it didn't happen by accident, a banking system, which I perceive to be the centerpiece of his overall system of oppression is not the cruise missiles, it's the banking system. That oppressor is identified in the Quran, in Surat Al Ma'idah, verse number 51. We can speak about that later. It is a Zionist alliance of Zionist Jews and Zionist Christians, a mysterious. European alliance which is about to deliver to Israel after a long struggle the status of ruling state in the world. The Zionists want history to end with a Pax Judaica which would replace the Pax Americana in which we now live, which itself replaced the Pax Britannica, which preceded it. I wrote this book 10 years ago, Jerusalem in the Quran, to explain that end of history. When Israel rules the world tomorrow, then a man would rule the world from Jerusalem and Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam described that man to us but this subject belongs to ilmu akhiru zaman or Islamic eschatology a subject which Islamic scholars I don't understand why are shunning that man is of course Dajjal the false messiah the US dollar is about to collapse. Even a schoolboy knows that. I don't know why the bankers don't know that. If they do, why aren't they talking about it? And why aren't they explaining to us why the US dollar is about to collapse? And how is it that Imran Hussein, 15 years ago, was saying that the US dollar not only is it going to collapse, but it must collapse. Is he a prophet? Does he have an angel talking to him? Excuse me for my frustration. But like my brother Omar, we have been voices crying in the wilderness for a long, long time now. Why must the US dollar collapse? And we said that when it collapses, it will bring down the U.S. economy and that will facilitate the transfer of power to Israel. 
And we said that the present monetary system will then have to be replaced with a new monetary system. This is monetary economics. They don't teach it in the Darul Ulum. And yet we get fatwa on money by people who have never studied modern monetary economics. This knowledge came from the study of the Quran and the study of the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the context of Ilmu Akhilu Zaman. If the modern monetary system which came out of Bretton Woods and which has come out of the international monetary system and the monetary fund, sorry, and the articles of agreement of that fund which incidentally, and even Dr. Mahathir did not know it, prohibits what Allah made halal. Allah gave us the gold dinar and the silver dirham, which are in the Quran. But we live in an age today where some people have a less than a passing acquaintance with the Quran. The dinar is in the Quran. Did you know that? And the dirham is in the Quran. Did you know that? And the International Monetary Fund, the Articles of Agreement, prohibit the use of gold as money. Ask them why, they'll never tell you why. And yet we remain like people eating roti chanai and going to sleep. <laughs> and claiming to have scholarship. The money which is coming, I said 15 years ago, is going to come. It's already here. When the US dollar collapses, it's going to bring down the whole world of paper money with it. And this bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram paper money, which of course we can defend anytime anyone wants to challenge us or not, is going to be replaced with electronic money, which will be more haram and more dangerous. I thought it's coming in the future, it's already here. But then imagine my surprise, based on my study of Islamic eschatology, two years ago I realized that the same people who have given us paper money in order to rip us off and to reduce Indonesia to abject poverty, so our daughters will now be maids all over the world, our daughters, and be paid the salary of dogs and cats, our daughters. The same people who are now giving us electronic money in order to have a system where you have espionage to track down every single transaction and to be able to close an account whenever they want to, whenever it's convenient. The same people are going to bring back gold and silver tomorrow as money. I was surprised when I discovered that. That we're moving towards a tomorrow, maybe 20 years from now, when Israel is going to mint gold and silver. Oh, is going to mint gold and silver? My gosh, Imran, you are behind time. Israel is already minting gold and silver coins. Go to Singapore, you see them on display. I don't want to live to see that day when those who are today waging war on Islam on Israel's behalf are going to bring back gold and silver as money while we remain ominously silent on the subject apart from Umar and myself and a few others who have been crying in the wilderness for the last 15 years. So I pray to Allah to take me away from the world before that day comes because the shame and the disgrace will be too much for me. Let them live who today will not raise a little, ling a little finger. Not even a little finger will they raise and declare themselves Islamic banking. But they'll never say that this paper money is bogus, it's fraudulent, it's, it's haram. And they will never say let us bring back the gold and silver coins. May Allah keep them alive for that day, so that they may face the shame and the disgrace of a people who have betrayed Allah and his messenger. What is riba? 
And how does it oppress? Are questions we could take up later. There are two forms of riba. One is, of course, lending money on interest. And when money le is lent on interest, the rich will remain permanently rich forever and ever. And the poor will be imprisoned in permanent poverty forever and ever. Money will no longer circulate through the economy. And even a schoolboy can see that's today's economy. But there is another form of riba which can be identified in taking a piece of paper. And if you have not studied the Bretton Woods Accord, and you have not studied the International Monetary Fund and the history of monetary economics, please remain silent. You take a piece of paper, and you print a picture on it, and you put a number on it, and you give to that picture, because you are God, a fictitious value. You've, because you are God himself. You create money out of nothing. Well, wait until you reach the grave. Just wait until you reach the grave. That's a form of riba. Or you create something called a bank. Take the word Islam out of it because that's hijacking the name of Islam. And somebody has an account with $1,000 and he writes checks. He goes all around KL writing checks because they know him, the, back, the shopkeepers accept the checks. But you have 1,000 in your account and you write out checks for 20,000? You should go to jail. That's fraudulent. Schoolboy will understand that. Is this fractional reserve banking? Can this be halal? If that is halal, you should buy a one-way ticket to the moon. And so, it is not Islam when you lend money on interest. And it is not Islam when you say goodbye to money with intrinsic value that Allah created. And you create money out of nothing. That can't be Islam. But as Omar was mentioning earlier, there is also something called riba through the back door. And let us speak briefly on that before we end. Can I buy on credit? Of course I can buy on credit. Nabi Muhammad bought on credit. Can the shopkeeper raise his price? Because he's selling to me on credit? The cash price is five ringgits. I don't have the five ringgits. So the shopkeeper gives me time to pay. But because he's waiting for his money, the cash price now has to be changed to a credit price. So the credit price will now be 10 ringgits because he has to wait for his money. Can a credit price be higher than a cash price? You don't need a degree from some Sharia Institute. I mean, this is simple. This is five ringgits worth of common sense. That if you have to wait for your money, that the money should increase over time. That's riba. That is the essence of riba. That money grows over time. And so when the bank says, and they call it Morabaha. They should define it, put in brackets after Morabaha, backdoor riba. <laughs> and these are our Muslim brothers and sisters. And we should warn them about the punishment. I hope somebody asks me about that question. <laughs> what can be the punishment in the grave for this bogus? Betrayal of Islam. If credit price is higher than cash price, the difference between the two would be because of time. That money can increase over time, that's riba. And so Islamic banks should take the word Islam out of it. 
so long as they are practicing these bogus transactions. What is the solution? Allah gave it in the Quran. In the very last revelation, He says, Wa ahallallahu al wa harram al riba. The alternative to riba is business. <coughs> business. A business transaction is one which embraces risk. You can make a profit or you can suffer a loss. Once there is that risk in the transaction, it's not riba. And number two, don't wait until the enemy who is now waging war on Islam and who gave us this monetary system that we're now using. Don't wait until they return to dinar and dirham, to gold and silver, because the embarrassment will be too great. Let us return to the dinar and dirham now. It's not sufficient to mint it. No. More than that. When you see something which is munkar, you got to respond to it. And the response must be to change it. For And minting the dinar and dirham to work alongside the munkar and say, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, is not the solution. We have to be more aggressive than that. Ours is the alternative. Yours must go. How do we do that? My suggestion has been, let us build a market in which we'll prohibit the bogus money. Let us build a market in which we'll return to the gold and silver dirham. And Allah does not sleep. And if we're doing the work that is pleasing to Allah, then Allah is the one who charts the cost of victory. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much.